Alright guys, Touch Grubbit here, back again today. Change of scenery here in the background. Some of you newer guys may not have ever seen this background before if you've subscribed relatively recently, and thank you very much if you have, or if you've been a long-time subscriber, every, each and every one of you, I appreciate very much. I probably don't say it enough. Anyway, I'm home for the weekend here, so change of scenery for the next couple of days or so, and then I'll be back down for, uh, for the coming days. In the coming days, we are going to get some announcements related to Dallas and Team Envy, as has been talked about over the last day or so from Hastro, of course, CEO of Team Envious, and we will go into that announcement in a few minutes time. In addition, of course, to Alex being confirmed onto this Minnesota team. I'll try not to say midnight. I know you guys catch me out on that, and uh, I catch myself out because... MN reminds me of the Midnight team from last year. That's how I would see it, like abbreviated. And then Optic, well, formerly Optic Midnight, is now working on their content side or whatever exactly she is doing over at Minnesota. So then that confuses my brain even more. I'll try and get it correct. Alex is joining that team. I think a lot of you guys are going to agree with me that this is a pretty damn good pickup. We're going to go into that in the coming minutes. Like if you guys enjoy, subscribe. If you are new as always, I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks, first of all, for to Seth for pointing this clip out to me here on um, Mohack. I haven't heard of this guy. I guess he's some sort of S&D star. Just a little bit of context of this clip. They're playing World War II, which um, like USS Texas, it really is an eyesore. But um, but anyway, they're playing against Hook and uh, Illy, I believe, on the other team. And, uh, well, I'll play the clip. This is the comment he makes. Is their fist bumping after every round? Wait, are, they, are they with each other IRL? Uh, yeah, but we can't say where. Oh, let's go, bro. Every gunfight Wait, again, too. Is it who shots he and him? Dude, are you freaking dumb? We can't talk about this. Like, come on, that's not announced yet. So you can see from the whole clip, his teammate said, like, on oh, oh, who Illy shot see, because Mohawk himself said, oh, they're fist bumping in real life, right? That was the that was the, the key little bit of giveaway. And then he mentioned Shotzi as well as teammate. So obviously we kind of knew this is what the rumor is going to be. And it, well, the rumor is three, these three plus Clayster plus Crimsix. But that will be announced next week as we'll go into in a second here related to what uh, what Hastra had to say yesterday. But moving on from this, we have some logos based on a couple of these teams. The Paris Legion, a rumored name, have this logo. I, I think you call this like a fleur de lay or something like that. Um, I forget exactly what what you're meant to call it but pretty cool i think this is pretty well aligned with the logo that they have for their um their overwatch league team it's nice to see that that kind of consistency at least over the couple of brands and also we have a confirmation on the same website of this being the design for uh, the new york subliners now um you know this for paris pretty damn nice logo i kind of like what the vibe they're going for here this is grim what is this why is new york like so small what like, do you guys like this? I'd be very intrigued to know. Anyway, so I did go on this website just to have a look. And as you can see, under Paris Legion here, you scroll down. Trademark information. All this stuff is available online. Filing language, English, French second language. And then graphic representation. Here it is, the Paris Legion logo. So I wondered what you guys thought about that. And really, the name in general, the Paris Legion. Um, they have uh, announced their roster, of course. That seven-man roster that we talked about a few days ago. We're not sure exactly who's going to be on the starting lineup yet. But we will get into that of course when things do be become confirmed over the next few weeks don't know what Paris are exactly going to do whether they're going to do any more talks about who's going to become uh, their starting roster and maybe they'll wait until the CDL starts up all the way down in January I don't even know if they've said for sure January they've just said 2020 I'm guessing January regardless pretty interesting logo Let's move on here then to what uh, Hastro had to say. I'll play a couple of minutes of this clip for you guys. First part, he talks about exactly what the future holds for the next week of Dallas Call of Duty. And then at the end, there's a little hint towards the rumor for the Chicago team. So, uh, so I guess let's roll it. Uh, I'll tell you guys a little bit about what's about to happen. Uh, next Monday, we will start announcing our roster. So every day starting next Monday for that entire week, we will announce one player every day on our Twitter account and other social media profiles. So Dallas, uh, COD underscore Dallas is the Twitter account that you can follow to go and uh, wait for these roster signings. So uh, again, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you'll have a new player announced every day next week leading up to us revealing our brand name and logo uh, on Saturday, October 18th. Uh, sorry, Saturday, October 19th. Uh, so on the 19th, we will have a live stream that goes out on multiple 
streaming platforms around the world and uh, you will be able to check out our new team brand, our team name, and get to know a little bit more about what we're doing with Dallas Call of Duty. So just before we go into that second part of the clip, as he says, next week from Monday all the way through to Saturday, I believe the way he phrases it, there's going to be announcements. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they're going to do the player reveals. I wonder which order they will do the players in. My guess is they'll probably start with Hook because he's probably the most obvious, the most likely to be staying, been with Envy a very long time. Then which direction will they go? Will they jump straight in with the Clayster and the Crimson? if those rumors are true or will they go Ilian Shotzi first and uh, and leave the the bigger dogs the veterans for later I wonder how how they'll play it and then on Saturday the Dallas Empire is the rumor but that may have changed because Hastro did talk about behind the scenes initially how well um there's a lot of names that they have they've trademarked they've been looking at different options the Empire was one of them that we thought was the most likely but they also have trademarks for like the Republic or whatever so we'll have to see exactly what happens there next Saturday and there also may be some other um announcements regarding their coaching staff and that which we haven't really heard of yet we have had rumors that mutex is going to be like an s d analyst but some of the coaches potentially for this team that i'm hearing about are very very interesting we'll go into that in a couple of minutes time right here uh, just to finish off here on this dallas update as uh kevu or apologies if i'm pronouncing that awfully whatever he says uh, nothing but love and respect to all the old optic guys i hope they do well over there which is pretty much a paraphrasing of what hastro does say so i'll play that little bit of the clip now related to the chicago team you know i got nothing Nothing but love and respect for Hector and you know when we figured it out we weren't gonna be able to make it happen I just told him like go go do, go take that deal man because you know that's a good deal and, and you're gonna be in good hands so uh, nothing but love and respect to, to all the old optic guys and, and to Hector and I hope that they do really well in Chicago so as he says I hope they the optic guys do well over there of course related to you know, talking about Hector moving to NRG moving to Chicago but also definitely by saying they, it definitely means that someone else with Hector from former Optic is going to be going there as well. We know what the rumor is, Scump Formal Envoy Arsides and, and um, Gunless, sorry. But uh, but yeah, just a little bit of, as, uh, as he says, mine a little bit of intel. So more news related to Dallas, or at least more rumors. Joe DeLuca, of course, Merc, one of the, well, premier Call of Duty casters, right? Having moved from being a player back in the Black Ops 3 days into the analyst desk and then he was of course Maven's partner from this last season mixed opinions really on Merck overall I personally think he's a fantastic talent I think he's got a good voice for commentary and and analyst work he's a nice partner with Maven I think a lot of people maybe rightly so would say that he probably belongs more on the analyst desk than he does in the in the casting booth but I think he's he's great to be honest wherever you put him anyway he took out broadcast talent for Cod World League out of his bio now the response he made for this was that you know the CWL doesn't exist anymore right wink wink and nudge nudge because of course yes the Call of Duty World League doesn't exist anymore but if he was already signed on as broadcast talent for the upcoming season he would have just changed this at to the COD League which is now the new at of the league which we talked about I believe yesterday so yes he takes this out of his bio from what I've heard, he's probably going to be going into some sort of coaching position, which is very intriguing. We know that a lot of the other casters, Nameless, Pac-Man, Maven, uh, they've signed for talent agencies. Bad Moon Talent comes to mind for a couple of them. So they have some backing behind them when they go to see what their options are for the upcoming season. I'm sure a lot of those guys would probably accept uh, the, the offer they get from the CDL if they do get one. Um, of course, Maven will have offers from pretty much anywhere, so they're going to have to pay big bucks to keep hold of Maven, but definitely would be a good decision in my opinion. But um, Joey takes it out of his bio. Now, the intriguing part is we've heard links with Merck and also with Rambo, intriguingly, was rumored just a few days ago that um, they could be working with Team Envious. Now, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work. Who would be the head coach if you're envy who do you decide to make your head coach out of rambo and merc right i m maybe i'd personally be tempted to go with merc just because he has the the most recent interaction with call of duty but then again rambo having had a couple of years kind of away from the scene he's still been there to some degree and he's obviously a legend in his own right i'm sure some of you newer guys won't know uh, what a legend rambo ray is but um you know definitely someone who's on the radar here 
So would Merck take up like an assistant coach position? Is that something that he doesn't seem like a particularly egotistical guy, but is that somewhat something that someone who's just come from being the premier Call of Duty duo for casting go down to be an assistant coach under under a guy who's been out of the scene for a long time? Like, I'm not exactly sure that works. Um, at least maybe for me, maybe for Merck, it's fine. And uh, no, I'm sure the money's fine as well. But, um, you know, whether he's considering other options with other teams to be a coach or some sort of work for them, maybe is more appealing to him than casting and having the, the pressures of that and maybe he wants to do some more behind the scenes stuff kind of like what YNK did or Yanko being the like the best analyst in the CSGO scene then goes and works as the analyst the coach whatever for uh, for FaZe Clan right so maybe a lot of these guys find similar pressures in their own environments so here we go then let's go on to this announcement Call of Duty Minnesota honestly a fantastic video announcement here Minnesota have got their content game on point you love to see it I'll just roll the video Hey Siri, how do I get to Minnesota? Getting directions to Minnesota. Please make sure your seatbelt is fastened. So yeah, truly cracking stuff for Minnesota. I really like this announcement and I really like the pickup as well. Let's just go through the team. Silly Assault God RX joined by Alex. The fifth is rumored to be a seam at the current time that he works so well in terms of this role. Like I, I really like the look of this squad right now uh, just because when we look at it from the perspective of a boots on the ground title, I think a lot of players, or not necessarily a lot of players, but a lot of people and building squads, especially for this game, are looking through, the, uh, looking through a lens of Black Ops 4, what we just saw. There's a, a degree to which, of course, you have to do that, right? Dallas, as um, Hastro said in his video, he feels like they've won Rostomania, right? They're going to get Hugh Gilly and Shotzi, probably. A couple of those guys have never even played competitive before. So this is not, of course, not competitive, but they've never played, they've never been 18 or been allowed to play at a CWL environment. However, these guys on this Minnesota team did fantastic in the World War II season. A lot of people are looking at Black Ops 4. I don't think players' individual levels as apart from a few exceptions, has really shifted that much between World War II and now. Like, there's a couple of players that maybe have got more washed, but some of these guys in the kind of middle of their careers, they've been around a while. Um, of course, Silly's been around ages, but a guy like Assault, right? He's been around a while. His, um, his ability, I don't think, changed from World War II to Black Ops 4. It's just some games suit different players better, right? Now, in this coming game, in the Modern Warfare season, that's probably a game that's going to suit him much better. Alex was good this year, but he was even better in World War II. Silly was good this this year but he was even better in World War 2. Goddorex was good in World War 2 as well. Fantastic this year. So you've got a mix of both elements of the scale. Asim is a little bit maybe more questionable but I guess if the pros respect him that's a way to go. Alex I think is a fantastic pickup though over from the UK and uh, I really rate it. I don't want to go into too much depth on this roster just yet because when the full confirmation does happen, whenever that is going to happen, then I'll obviously do a deeper dive into the roster. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching and uh, and yeah stay tuned i'll see you next time